Hello, I'm Trevor Lewis, and this is a video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use SketchUp for schools. Uh, you can take a tour of it here, and you can go into curriculum, and you can watch all sorts of different uh, tutorials and that will walk you through how to do various uh, tasks. And we can use SketchUp for, for 3D printing, although I find SketchUp a little harder to use than SolidWorks for 3D printing. We're going to try and make that work. But what I want to show you is some of my tips. So the first thing I'm going to show you is when you create a new one, just make sure that you are paying attention to what units you're using. Um, our printer speaks millimeters, so it's always better for us to start with the millimeter template. So I'm going to choose simple template millimeters. It takes me in here. And that makes it so that when I type a measurement, if I don't tell it what kind of measurement it is, it's going to assume that it's in millimeters. But you can see it's still set up for a rather large object because here's a here's a person but now that the units will be in millimeters so they make things for the 3d printer we're going to be making things that are going to fit right down here just like shoe sized or smaller probably but um this is, this is the sketchup environment over here we've got we can put a title on here so we can call this let's call this uh i'm going to call this my first project i don't like to use spaces so i'll use camel case and once you have it all set up it should have your your name up here. You should be able to tell which uh, where that it's saved right here. And as you're working on it, it'll it'll auto save. So let me show you some some tips for SketchUp. So first thing to notice are the axes. So there's a green axis, a red axis, and a blue axis. And those colors will keep cropping up. And so if you can distinguish those colors, that makes it a lot easier. The other thing to know is how to move around. So on your mouse, if you click down the mouse wheel and hold it down like it's a button. That allows you to orbit very easily. Um, if you're not using a mouse, that can be a little bit trickier, but you can get it done by choosing orbit right here and then clicking the mouse, just regular clicking. So you, if you're using a trackpad, you can orbit. And that helps you turn the world. Now you can't really tell with this person because this person's actually a flat sprite that faces you no matter which way you're looking, which is kind of weird. Um, but if you have a 3D object, it's a little easier to tell. So let's make a 3D object. The, the basic way of making things is to start with rectangles. There's a bunch of different rectangles and shape tools here, but the simple rectangle is from corner to corner. And then you just click one corner and you click another corner. So in CAD, you always want to click to start and click to finish. If you click and drag, you actually end up with less control. So it's a click for the first corner and click for the second corner. Don't hold the mouse button down. You'll have a lot more control that way. So now I've got a flat rectangle. It's really easy to draw on this red green plane, the floor plane but it's harder to draw if I want to draw something straight up in the world. So what I usually do first is I go to the push pull tool and I pull up this rectangle to make a 3D object. So now I actually have several flat faces to draw on. So if the thing I want to draw is flat like this, I can draw it now using the pencil tool. So the pencil tool is really nice. It'll snap to things like edges. It'll snap to things like midpoints. So I can draw from edge to midpoint. I can also use references. So if I want to line up with this point, I can drag over here and see that red dashed line. That means I'm going right along the red axis along that face until I get to the other edge. And then I can click up to that mid midpoint there. And so I have this, this shape right here. Now, if I wanted to, if I was really just trying to draw a pentagon like this, and I didn't actually want this whole thing, I could just grab the eraser tool, and I click and I drag across a line, and it'll get rid of that line. If that line then breaks the face, you end up with stuff like this. So you can see it's in SketchUp, the, the problem with SketchUp for 3D printing is it's really easy to make stuff like this that are is infinitely flat and cannot exist in the real world. So you have to be really careful to try and make things that are solids if you want them to 3D print. This gray side is the inside surface. This white side is the outside surface. So when you make an object by push-pulling it, what you want it to make sure it, it turns out as is you get this sort of whitish face on the outside and all the gray should be on the inside. So if I, if I zoom in by scrolling the mouse and then I orbit in so I can see the inside, you can see it's all gray on the inside and all white on the outside. These little blue dots are like a preview of a selection. They're showing me that I can select that. So that's how you move around. Um, you can do other things in SketchUp too that are really nice. Like let's say I want this to be an object that I want to stay together. I don't want it to break apart. If I click on a face, I select it with the select tool. If I double click, I select the face and all of the edges around it. If I triple click, one, two, three, I select all adjacent faces and everything connected to it all at once. 
If I then right click and make this a group, it will lock all of this together as one group. And that changes a whole bunch of stuff. But one thing it does is it makes it so that it's 3D printable as a solid. And I can check that right here with this solid inspector tool. If I, if I turn on the solid inspector, it says, good news, your model is a solid. It, let's draw another rectangle by just clicking and clicking. And then I'll push pull it up. And then I'm gonna select that with the select tool. And it, if I, it says select a group or component and then run inspector. If I try and run it right now, it says this is not a group or a solid because it's not grouped. But let's let's uh, let's add a little flaw here. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw another line or two, and then I am going to erase some of these lines. Right. So this this is still kind of an object but you can see there's a hole in it. So now if I triple click it and I right click and I make that a group, if I run the solid inspector, it says there's an inspection issue. There's a border hole. So look, it even highlights it in red. It says, what's up with this part? I don't know how to deal with this when I'm 3D printing. A 3D printer needs to know what the inside and the outside of the object are, but if I can see on the inside, then that's not gonna work. If I click on this, it says, good news, that model is a solid. So that can be 3D printed, this cannot. Um, you can also play around a little bit with materials over here. So materials, there's a whole bunch of different materials. They have solid colors, but they also have uh, textures and things, fun things to make your stuff look like it's actual stuff. And you, when you see, when you have a group like this, it when I click paint on one side, it paints all the sides like that. But if I it explode the group and turn it back into f just faces, when I click, it only, oops, oh, they're all selected. That's why that, that happened. Let me undo that. You got undo and redo here. That's very useful. Let me deselect everything here. So now if I, if I wanted to paint with a paint bucket each side a different color, when they're separate, you can paint them with whatever color because they're not one object, so they're not made out of the same material. So those are the basics of SketchUp. Try and make something that looks recognizable and turn that in, and we'll go from there.